Hey my people, how you doing? I hope you're having a damn good day. Welcome back. Season 2, part 2 is about to be underway. We've just signed Morgan Gibbs White. He's going to be a big part player for us in our strive for an FA Cup run. Hopefully we can win it, but only time will tell really. And of course we are doing pretty well in the league, so we'll see how things go. And we have a very big game up against the likes of Tottenham Hotspurs away at their ground. So it is going to be a very challenging fixture nonetheless. We'll just have to see how things pan out. But immediately off the bat, we do not get it to a great start. As if in the first five minutes of the game, originally I thought it was Harry Kane, but it turns out it was Benton Cole. Five minutes in, and that is like now. Tough. Very, very tough. Bad. They, they, throughout this game, they're just frustrated as they did some really silly things defensively to allow the school balls, such as this Harry Kane's absolute banger from distance against his former team, of course. He brought him in the beginning of the season after learning him last season but they like i said they just did some really silly things defensively to to make me say well they're there for taking but at the same time they're not because for all the defensive errors they had in them we had equally, equally the same amount of errors i mean ben Tenkel was brilliant arthur Mello scoring two goals to put them three two up before morgan gibbs white making his debut of course came on to net a late, late, late equaliser against Tottenham and he would essentially rescue us the points so I'm not too perturbed about that I mean, away at Tottenham we get the points, we get the, well, we get the points I should say but at the same time we could have gotten all three points because uh, the, the way that our boys defended was not very good we didn't keep our defense in shape at all it's just frustrating because small errors can lead to goals conceded and that's what happened right there but we move on now to Wolves in the FA Cup of course we want to target a deep FA Cup and that is the the ultimate goal for the season that's the goal that I've set for myself this season and I think the boys are, are well and truly behind that goal we, we get off to a bit of a sloppy start in the first half, though, 1 1. And I mean, like I said in the previous game against Tottenham, we could see some sloppy goals. But we came right. We came right in the end. We netted the correct goals. Britain's cross to, to Diaz for the second goal was superb. Cantwell with a goal to essentially kill the game off. But don't 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 be like shocked because Wolves, they did get themselves back into their nets with the late equaliser. But unfortunately, we were just too good for them, and would end up winning three-two. So, you know, we'll take we'll take that. Move on to the next round. But we move on now to Chelsea, a very very tough team, and one that loves to counter attack, counter attacking football, and that's not go ahead and have to play possession based style. And Britain was out of position for this passage of play, which allowed for I think it was Kenny to get down the left hand side, and um, essentially cross the ball to Mason Mount who was open at the back post. I don't know if he said where um, Pickering was, but he was nowhere to be found. Mendy, though, in this first half, or the first 25 minutes, I should say, was incredible. He made multiple saves um, before Burton Diaz smashed it home for the 1-1 game. And then, of course, of course it had to be Kai Havertz. He uh, smashed it home for a 2-1 lead for Chelsea. It was very much a back-and-forth game. Very much an end to end type game, and I, I kind of did enjoy the, the momentum of everything. And um, we did get back to the game with the Diaz goal before Kai Havertz scoring from the corner. Set piece is not ideal for us whatsoever. Ah, uh, yeah. But uh, again, later on in the game, Dolan comes off and smashes it in first, rescuing us from the point of the We then move on to Southampton in the FA Cup and beat them 2 1 to progress further on. Our journey in the FA Cup continues. We then moved on to Wolverhampton Wanderers where we ended up losing 3-2. Very unfortunate turn of events. As the transfer window wound down, I had already made my signing. I had already spent the money that was allocated to me by the board. So we weren't really going to have a very busy transfer deadline day. I mean, I think Morgan Gibbs-White has had enough time to settle in quite well. I think he's done a very good job in doing so scoring a few goals here and there and, and just getting everything underway. We would move on and face Southampton where we would end up winning 1-0 before taking an unfortunate 1-0 loss at Everton. We would then go on to face Watford in the FA Cup where we would end up winning 3-1 on the day. 
A very tough game against Fulham meant that we would end up winning 3-2, securing all three points. Every point is valuable, of course. But now we face Everton in the FA Cup. The, the same point, the quarterfinals, I should say. We're going with a very strong team, of course. But so are they. Bellingham in the midfield. Doan on the right. Damari Gray on the left. Everton are going to be a very tough team to break down. And our defensive application in the midfield is just brilliant to allow us to, to just win the ball back very high at the field, very quickly get to our striker and, and secure that first goal. But Everton, they were not going away. They were not going to fight. They actually ended up going in front 3-2 before late on Gallagher, Sam Gallagher with a huge, huge goal. He rescued us. My heart was in my mouth when, when he was in the one-on-one -on -one against the goalkeeper. Harrison Reburn, extra time, made it count the most so. Picked up the ball in the field, driving in deep past the box, and then firing off shots. Jordan Pickford was not equal to it. And then, of course, that allowed him to just throw a lot of ball forward. And that really allowed us for the final goal. The final goal in the pocket, Sam McGallagher, yet again, fantastic for us. He might end up starting World FA Cup games for us, because he has been phenomenal. And as you can see there, there's no huge teams left in the FA Cup. It is very much up for grabs. Spurs beaten. They were the big. They were the last of the big six. Does that mean that we're favourites now? I don't think so. But it does mean that we could potentially have silverware in our hands by the end of the season. Moving on though into the Premier League, back at Stoke City, we would end up winning three one against them, and now we have a very very big game against Manchester City. Of course, we did draw with them opening day of the season. What does that mean now? Of course, they are title challenges. We're up there with them. We're up in there trying to compete for a top four place with them, potentially compete for a trophy with them. So we'll have to see how things pan out. Diaz opens scoring from the spot before Erling Haaland banging one home. Great ball movement from City Ball and allowed them to just absolutely destroy us, take us apart. Our defense took no chance. But Harry Winks. Me up again. He has been, been sensational goal scoring for the season. Scores big goals for us. And none other than a bigger goal than that for our season. 74 minutes, he scores the winner. Damn near Manchester City. We take our confidence, we move on to the Arsenal game, which, to be fair, in the first half was a very dull affair. Before a little bit of magic between the team, Burrits and Diaz securing us the first goal. And then it it allowed us to just counter attack and then sit back. And that led to the, the Frederick White goal for a 2 0 lead and ultimately beating Arsenal in this game. Yeah, they, they were very flat. They were very flat in this game. <laughs> As you can see there, Burton Diaz with a cheeky little late, late goal, securing us a 3 0 win on the day. Arsenal not up to the standards that they were at. The first time we played them, of course, they took us apart then from them. But yeah, I'll take those three points, of course. Like I keep saying, every point counts. We're trying to compete for a Premier League title at this point in the season, which is absolutely unheard of. Like, we have got an insanely hard set of fixtures. We faced City, we faced Arsenal, and now we're at Anfield, facing off against Liverpool. Morgan Gibbs White, he starts, Campbell starts, White starts, Burton Diaz does start. But it was Oxley Chamberlain who created a bit of magic down the left hand flank for Liverpool to help them open up their, their scoring accounts against us just before half time. Most time with an easy back post tackle. So damn annoying. I mean, to be fair, Salah, most games that I play against Liverpool, he does tend to do a lot, but in this game, we kept him so quiet on the left hand side, right hand side, sorry. Pickering was, was really good. And defending against him, and yeah, I, I just didn't understand how he was left so far open. It is a bit of a concern defensively, but we did get back into the game with a very lucky pass to Burton Diaz, who was open at the back post, and we secured a draw, but not really what we need so far in our season because we need every point, and that was somewhat wasteful as we had chances in the game to potentially win. We then move on to Aston Villa though, and we beat them 2 1. Moving on though, semi-finals, FA Cup, this is where we want to be, this is where that season really matters, and boy oh boy was it a semi-final to behold. We got off to the worst possible start, 
14 minutes in, 2 nil down. Wow. I, I didn't even know what to say or what to do because I had picked a team accordingly, thinking we have everything we need in order to beat Brent, and, and we didn't in those first 15 minutes. But you wouldn't say that 10 minutes after Brentford's second goal, we would be drawing with them yet again 2-2. It, it was the first half to behold as the Silva, Josh De Silva, of course, for at Arsenal, gives them a 3-2 lead going into halftime. This was a game to behold, a game on the half. And of course, it was a game for Sam Gallagher to come off the bench and rescue us yet again. I was so, so chuffed yet again. It literally gave me goosebumps of the, the Everton game, of course. This moment right here, Sam Gallagher, 100 minutes in, he secures us potentially our biggest win of the season, 4-3 to, to, of course, us Blackburn Rovers against Brentford. Biggest win of the season, we are in the final. And it, it remains to be seen who we might be playing with. But I think Sam Gallagher has got two stars in that. He is going to be a very big player for us come the end of the season, and he's going to be a very big player in order for us to secure our first major silverware in however many years. I have no idea. Back to the Premier League, though, we would end up beating Leicester City 2-1 before beating Leeds United 2-0. Very, very happy with the wins. But now we head up into a very tough game at Ewood Park, not just United, but of course we did take them apart 5 0 last time we played them, and that was at Old Trafford. As you can see, Burson Diaz is very happy with his appearances. He's got 28 goals, 35 appearances, not too shabby if you ask me. And he was a man amongst the boys in this one, turning from goal scorer to provider in this one, as he sets it up. Amazing the plates, a platform plate for Freddie White. And then he goes on to, to play it into to Morgan Goodwill to socks it home past the the hair. 16 minutes in, we're 2 0 up, Manchester United in the mud. But not for very long, as just before, or just after the set, the first half, or early in the second half, I should say, Christian Ronaldo comes up big. He is an Everton at this point. You know when you face United, he is always likely to score a goal. And um, this is where we needed our major man, Roberto Diaz, making the Nazis defense look very, very, I don't know, just inadequate. Roberto Diaz, though, was, was very, very good uh, making a play in this game, making sure he's in the right positions. And he secured himself a hat trick. He secured himself a hat trick. He would end up beating Manchester United 5 1 on the day. And I was very, very happy with his performance. He could end up smashing Mo Salah's record of 32 goals in the Premier League season, but we'll have to see how things pan out. I was very happy with him though, like, I, like I've been saying, he has been our standard player this season. The reason we're doing so well is because of Brayton Diaz. The reason we're doing so well in the FA Cup is because of Sam Gallagher. Our strikers are leading the way for us from the get-go. And now it is time for our game of the season, Newcastle United. What might be may not happen, but what might happen may not be. I don't know. I'm trying to be philosophical here, people. I am trying my best. But very big game up against Newcastle United. Of course, they spent some big money in the summer, securing some big time players for them. And of course, we are literally in the third so we have limited money, limited budget. And we have made our way through to the FA Cup final. As you can see, that is the team right there. Sam Gallagher is a big call, but he starts our game, our final. Josh Tillman as well in the final. And um, yeah, off the bat, five minutes in. Isaac scores a goal for the three person out. And I was like, no, it can't happen like this. We can't go multiple goals down early on in the game. And I think the boys realised that and he ended up getting a penalty to a handball. Todd Campbell, of course, is on the penalty kicks for this game as Berenson Diaz is on the bench. So he, he has a big role to play in this game and he made it 1-1 one, one, uh, before we piled on a load of pressure. And probably one of our sexiest goals scored in this career mode so far. Just the, 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 the sheer movements of the ball from Gallagher, the, the quick little pass from, from Morgan Gibbs White to flick it up and over the, the defender 
was, was impeccable. And then, of course, this goal right here. Josh Timmy, what a way to secure your first goal for the club in the FA Cup final. Just before, another handball was given in the box, and this time, Kakal goes the other way, sending the golf cart, the original right way. And um, he's on a brace, he could be on a hat trick, which uh, he does fulfill right here, right now. And our number one target of the summer potentially secures our silverware. In fact, he secures us the silverware. We're 5 1 up. They would then go on to secure a late consolation goal. We would end up winning 5 2. 5 2 FA Cup winners. Let's go. Lewis Travis, of course, he's there to lift the club's first major silverware in many, many years. Absolute scenes here at, at, well, at the ground, really. The fireworks are going off. Everybody was so, so happy. The underdogs throughout the, the entire FA Cup run. Just really happy with how things have turned out. So happy for the boys moving forward. And as our season winds down, we are. We're, we're very happy with how everything's been, been handled, how everything's panned out. I mean, Todd Cantwell, again, superb in this one. But all of our summer signings, all of our signings in general, have, have worked incredibly well. Moving on, though, to our Premier League as the season winds down, like I say, we end up with a very tough 1-0 loss to Middlesbrough. And that does mean that our end of the season is going to be very, very tight. Because if we had won that, we would be ahead of Man City right now, being it's our final game of the season against Bournemouth. And um, it would be all in our hands. And it still kind of is, but at the same time, it's not. We just need to make sure that we beat Bournemouth and Man City somehow draw or lose for us to try and overtake them in the Premier League title. And we get off to a brilliant start. There is Diaz with a nice little flip on to the likes of Milton Gibbs White and then Freddie White makes it two more just before half time. And as you can see there, half time, Manchester City are drawing with Southampton. We just need Southampton to hang on in there. But the, the, the biggest question is can they? Because I don't think they can, to be honest. But we can only play the game that's in our path and we get off to a frustrating second half start as one of them just hell bent on defending. We ended up winning 2-0, but Manchester City ended up winning 3-2, which would mean that the title would go to them. Everybody in the league was hoping for us to win this title as we were the ultimate underdogs. A very much Leicester-esque story, but unfortunately it was not meant to be as Man City would, pop, would pip us to the title by a singular point. Very, very disappointed with how things ended. Stoke, Bournemouth and Southampton all going down. If Southampton had won, they may have stayed up. That is, that is crazy scenes. But yeah, we move on though. Final stats of the season. Brereton Diaz was amazing for us. So was Cantwell. Bradley Dak, insane. Gallagher was superb for the FA Cup. Frederick White, of course, was amazing for us. All ends up. Harrison Reed, in terms of assists, led the team in assists. Cantwell again with double-digit assists. Freddie, Freddie White with 12 assists as well. So our boys did very, very well. But it, it was just a bit gutting. You know, it really was. Liverpool would end up winning the EFL Cup. Manchester United would lose to Paris Saint-Germain 1-0 in the Champions League final. Villarreal, of course, would win the, the Europa League. And then Wolves would lose to Atalanta so after wrapping up what seems to be a very successful first season in the Premier League, I decided to have a look at the potential jobs out there on the market. And there may be one or two that do entice me. So we'll have to see how things pan out. Stay tuned for season three coming up really, really soon. Sooner than you think. Anyway, people, I hope you have a damn good day. I'm out.